Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds, and today I'm at the San Onofre nuclear plant that's in the background. Uh, San Onofre is presently shut down. Uh, it has steam generator leaks. And I wanted to give this demonstration today to talk about what it is exactly that a steam generator does and how they can leak. Well, this blue thing around me represents the key component in the, in the side the, the steam generator. And it's called the tube sheet. It's two feet thick, solid steel, and 13 feet wide. So that's just about the shape and size of, of what I'm standing inside of. Now this would be a solid piece of steel before it's fabricated. Weighs about 100 tons, it's enormous. Now, first thing they do is they drill holes into this tube sheet. They drill 9,700 holes on this side and 9,700 holes on this side. What happens then is when they put the steam generator together, hot water comes from the nuclear reactor and that's symbolized by this orange pipe. So hot water would go through that. It's actually 32 inches in diameter and a quarter of a million gallons every minute comes in. It comes in the bottom and goes up through these tubes, crosses over and comes down on this side. Now where I'm standing is not the radioactive side. I'm standing on the non-radioactive side. Radioactive water is inside these, and hot steam and hot water is where I'm standing. Now, if you notice, these things are shaped like U's. That's why it's called a U-tube steam generator. The pipes come in, cross over, and come back in the shape of a U. Now, we've modeled up three tubes here. In fact, there would be 9,700 tubes on this side and each one would cross over into 9,700 tubes on this side. When San Onofre decided to rebuild their steam generators, they made a design change, and I believe that it's that design change that's causing the tubes to fail inside. Right where I'm standing, right in the middle of this tube sheet, down below was a massive pillar. It was called a stay cylinder. San Onofre decided to get rid of that massive pillar down below to cram more tubes into the steam generator. Instead of 9,300, they got 9,700 tubes. By removing the place right below me, more tubes meant they could get more heat out and more electricity out. But it also changed the flow inside the nuclear steam generator. What's happening in San Onofre now is that these tubes are vibrating and they're colliding with the pipes, with the pieces of metal that are designed to keep them separated. The vibrating... Arnie, um, we're, we're watching this clip that you just shot down at uh, San Onofre and uh, we're, we're getting to a really critical point in it where you're talking about how the vibrating of these uh, tubes um, probably punctured and has caused sort of a, a laser-like cutting reaction to occur. It, um, I'm wondering, uh, while we're bringing that clip back together, perhaps uh, we're, we're wondering if you could explain a little bit more about what your, your um, theory is on how the damage was caused by that single pipe, ruptured pipe, and how that impacted the 1300 coils that all were taken offline? Well, actually, uh, although uh, Edison went after me vociferously, uh, I was proven right. Uh, the, the reports we wrote that are up on the Fairwinds website um, were, were proven right just last week by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. What happened was this. Um, Edison didn't build the same steam generator that was there. They really tried to juice it up and in the process they screwed it up. They, they created a spot, like a sweet spot, inside the, uh, all these tubes that was pure steam. And that, no one ever planned on that happening. 
And in that pure steam, the tubes were banging together and damaging each other. Now, one happened to leak, but uh, quite a few others were, uh, were severely damaged by all this, this banging. Now, the, the NRC said that Edison could hear the tubes banging with something called the loose parts monitor and ignored it for, for 10 months. So um, there's lots of problems here that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission isn't addressing. How the computer com pro programs were ever qualified to do this kind of design. It just, it never, they had a 400% error in their computer programs. Wow. How the loose parts monitoring heard the pipes rattling and Edison didn't do anything about it. On and on and on. Um, but the, the biggest problem here, and I'll be, br I'll be brief, was that the, um, the, they plugged uh, 1,300 tubes. They didn't need to plug uh, that many. They only needed to plug 10. And so the question is, if they needed to plug 10, why did they plug 1,300? And again, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is not telling the truth here. The real reason is that something called a steam line break accident. If there had been a steam line break accident, all of these tubes that were damaged because they were vibrating together would have popped like popcorn and released enormous amounts of radiation, not inside the containment, but it would have gotten outside the containment. Mm. So it would have been a much worse accident than Southern California was ever prepared for. Um, so it was bad news, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission really isn't talking about it yet. Well, you know, uh, as Arnie would, would uh, verify, the pressure inside these tubes is incredible because that's how you keep the, um, the steam from going super critical. So when there's a leak in one of these tubes, it's just like a, a, some kind of cutting torch. Uh, you know, for instance, on nuclear-powered ships, when there's a steam leak, which is fairly comparable, you take a broom and you swing it in front of yourself one way and then the other way, and when it gets cut off, that's how you find the leak. You can't see the leak coming across the room. It's invisible, but it's so high pressure, it can cut through most everything. In fact, it could cut through metal, like it could cut through tubes next door. So if you start getting leaks in some of these tubes, it's pretty hard to model how much damage they could do in minutes after they start to leak. Well, what would be the probable cause for the original puncture that starts that leak, honey? Uh, they were crashing into each other. Uh, they were vibrating to wow. the point where they just totally damaged each other. And that's um, because they didn't bother with the, the, uh, the center stay? Well, yeah, the, because they put too many tubes in in the first place, that created too much heat in the center of this tube sheet. And with too much heat in the center and not enough heat on the outside, they got a steam bubble that floated up in the tubes allowing the tubes to collide with each other. And, uh, uh, you know, Edison brought this on themselves. They, they could have built the same steam generator that lasted 30 years, and instead they went out and they came up with an entirely new design. And they said they wanted this one to run 60. So they were planning on running this plant for 90 years with these steam generators in it. And no nuclear power plant as an overall design is, is meant to last that long. I mean, 40 years is really about it. And then you're starting to talk about more and more things going wrong until you shut the thing down. So a lot of these plants were expected to run for 30 or 40 years, and then they expected them to be decommissioned. And so it's kind of like in the case of Fukushima. Well, what are the chances of an earthquake and a tidal wave happening in the next 40 years? We'll have this thing taken down and out of here by the time there's ever a disaster. Well, you know, they've extended the licenses, extended the licenses way beyond the design life of this stuff. And at the same time, nature has proven that it can be pretty unpredictable, you know, and that things do happen. Um, you know, they, we have many examples of this in the past, and um, there was one in Russia called Chelyabinsk way back in the late 50s where uh, they had buried a bunch of waste in casks underground, but they had lost track of where they had had them. And so the heat radiating from, all the radi from each cask caused a steam explosion, which spewed the radiation up into the atmosphere. And it rained for you know, many, many square miles all around it. And that area is still completely uninhabitable today. 
But the CIA said, oh, we don't want to tell Americans about that because they might be against nuclear power if they heard about it. So the whole, one of the biggest nuclear accidents on the planet, much bigger than Chernobyl, was completely covered up because, gosh, you know, we really need this nuclear power. Or I should say nuclear industrialists need this nuclear power. There's, a, there's another one that was covered up by the United States government, and that was right outside of L.A. Uh, right outside of L.A., there was a reactor uh, in the late 50s, same time span, called uh, Santa Susana. And it had a meltdown, and it didn't have a containment building. Uh, they are, there, there are many square miles outside of L.A. that are contaminated even to this day, and they really don't know how to ever clean up that site. There's a lot of evidence of cancers in the uh, surrounding communities. And again, the, the, uh, the government tried for years to cover this up until about 1990 when uh, the cancers just, uh, you know, just pointed a finger back toward the Santa Susana reactor. So yeah, we, uh, we have a storied history of uh, uh, not telling the truth when we have nuclear accidents. Well, that's, a, that's amazing. I mean, Washington State has uh, that whole decommissioned or, or uh, de deactivated, I guess, plant uh, that you can't get within miles of, and they're, they're still trying to figure out how they're going to uh, get rid of the waste from the site. They can't move it. Uh, you've got, what would happen, theoretically, if, if this uh, event at San Onofre would, would have uh, continued. Well, I have a comment about that, Tom, because, you know, they all say that nuclear power, you know, it's so great because in one station you can produce so much electricity and serve so many people. How can you compare that to any other kind of energy? But in the case of this Los Angeles plant, San Onofre, uh, it only serves one and a half million people with its electricity. But if this tube accident continued and the thing melted down and blew, it could kill seven and a half million people. So the whole myth that a nuclear power plant just puts out so much energy that it takes care of a huge part of the United States is completely a myth. More people would be damaged than the people served by the electricity in the case of San Onofre. Incredible. Yeah. You know, we, on, on, the, on the San Onofre issue, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, the, uh, the service district is quite small, but, uh, you know, we said it at the very beginning of the, 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 the piece here. Uh, the, everybody's downwind from these plants. It's not, uh, it doesn't stop at the site boundary, that's for sure. You can have 40 great years and one bad day. <laughs> yeah. and, it just and, takes and, one and, bad day. <laughs> And it, it, well, that's the thing that really irritates me is it seems like the science doesn't even try and design for that bad day. It's kind of like rather than design for it, it's, it's uh, the, well, let's just put the picture up in front of that window and don't look out there because, you know, we can't do anything about it. If that day came, oh, well. You know. Well, I, I, I don't completely agree with that, Tom, because I do know nuclear safety engineers, and these guys write protocol after protocol to try to do what they can to keep these plants safe. But they're the first to tell you that this is one great big engineering nightmare. The whole thing is. It's like the purpose of nuclear power plants was originally not to make electricity. It was to provide nuclear material for a weapons program. The people who used to regulate the nuclear industry used to be the Department of Defense. So the purpose of these plants were to make nuclear bomb material and electricity and steam were the byproduct. So, you know, after we had all the nuclear weapons we needed, well now it became a business, you know, to produce electricity with them, but it's never been cost effective. It's the most expensive electricity we have. You know, the uh, Union of Concerned Scientists, uh, the Union of Concerned Scientists did a study that said that in fact, nuclear is about twice as expensive, as expensive as what we're paying for it because of all the subsidies for the last 70 years. Instead of five cents, it should be 10, essentially. Uh, so, uh, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. If you take the subsidies off the table, uh, a lot of renewables uh, come, come to the surface as being much more viable. And yeah. that doesn't even... That doesn't even include, you know, hanging on to the nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years. 